Hi guys, thank you for clicking on this video. Right now I'm gonna talk about the top 15 pictures that I've taken in 2019. A lot of these are sentimental. A lot of these mean a lot to me and represent how great my 2019 year was. So they're not gonna be your traditional epic like Tokyo street type of shot or your beautiful like Icelandic uh, landscape. It's not gonna be like epic pictures. It's just pictures that mean a lot to me and that I want to share with you guys. So without further ado, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Follow my Instagram, at Jerry Revolution, uh, if you guys want to see other pictures uh, that I'll post in the future. Other than that, let's get right into it. So number 15 is an event that Las Vegas Rescue Mission did. Rescue Mission has organizations in many of the popular cities in America. This was the Walk a Mile event where we uh, create funds to feed the homeless. We also packed a couple lunches uh, so that we can deliver them to the homeless in around, around the area. I would not have heard about this event if it wasn't for the mixed fit instructor, my friend, Michelle. Shelly uh, DM me and said, would you like to do this event? And of course, for charity, uh, to get to meet all these great people coming together for a great cause. It's a lot of great energy. So of course I said yes. I went and I did this and I had so much fun. Not only that, but this is one of the pictures along with a couple other ones that were actually published. I had two publications uh, actually put out my pictures and that was a very huge moment for me. I was very proud of that. So it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Shelly. So thank you, Shelly. Look forward to working with you and other projects in the future. Number 14 was a band that I met at Margaritaville. I saw them perform when I was having dinner with Andy and Mikey and in Nashville. And I went up to them at the very end of their set and I was like, hey, you guys have another show? Uh, I'm a photographer from Vegas. I'm just here for the weekend. I'll do it for free. Just wanted to get that live band concert shoot under my resume. And they were like, yeah, sure. We're doing one at, at Crossroads uh, Bar. And so I showed up did the show, we took a picture at the end, but this picture here, anytime I look through that, those pictures that I sent them, this is the one that I really like because it really shows how much fun they were having and through them, I th hope people see that I was having just as much fun. Not only that, but these, these girls were just phenomenal and I love the little bit of the motion blur in here because it just, it just shows action, you know what I mean? And I decided to make this a black and white because I feel like this is gonna be a timeless piece that is gonna last for a very, very long time. So that is number 14. We move on to number 13. Number 13 basically represents how my entire Denver trip went. Thank you to my friend Lucy for hosting me so I didn't have to pay for a hotel. But as I was walking up to this building, I took a picture with my cell phone, came out great. And I took a picture with my camera, came out phenomenal. This is basically uh, a representation of what I was seeing everywhere that I walked in Denver. Beautiful buildings, uh, beautiful trees and landscaped uh, areas, people everywhere, just in bikes, uh, walking. The energy of the city was really cool, especially near 16th Street in downtown Denver. So this is the Denver State Capitol building. I love how gold the top of the building is and how it reflects. You have the sh uh, sun shining through one of the openings there. And I really love the way the picture came out. To me, this just shows Denver. It transports me right back into that sidewalk and it's just, I'll never forget that trip. Beautiful trip, number 13, I love it. Uh, number 12, also in Denver, this is actually in the Botanical Gardens. Funny story, I was walking down this path and you have a path down that way where I took some pictures. You have a path down that way and as soon as I looked over, I see this and I was like, I have to take a picture of this. So I go up there, uh, I set up the shot, I go, I take a picture, came out exactly how I wanted it in my head. Had to do a little bit of editing, but when you were there, the way the sun was hitting everything, you had a lot of shadows in the bushes. You had these nice warm tones of autumn and fall and the leaves so orange and green that it came out exactly how I wanted it. It's like I set up this this set, right? Like it's for a movie, leaves on the ground. The only thing I would change about this picture is what I was wearing. Wish I had some darker clothing because I feel like my white shirt and my lighter jeans just stick out like a sore thumb. Um, 
maybe the pose as well. Maybe I should have been sitting on the bench like with my feet up. I don't know. That's the only thing I would change about this, but this picture came out amazing. I love it. That's why it's my end card at the end of all my videos for the time being. I'll never forget this picture. Great picture in the botanical gardens in Denver. Highly recommend them. Got some great shots everywhere I went. The next picture, very sentimental. Uh, this was, I believe, in April, April or May. Um, I went to Red Rock Canyon with my friend Audrey. This is in Las Vegas. I know I've been talking about Denver, so I don't mean Red Rocks. I mean Red Rock Canyon in Las Vegas. This is my only trip there this year, so I kind of want to be a little bit of a tourist in my city. So I grabbed Audrey, we went hiking afterwards, we had food at downtown Summerlin. But this is that moment where we were just kind of like up at a nice uh, top of the, almost near the top, where everything gets quiet. And we actually had, I made a video earlier, I'll link it up in one of the cards up here. Uh, we had a conversation about life and this shot right here represents that connection I made with her because at this time, I was feeling very isolated from everybody. I felt like I didn't have friends and she reminded me that, yeah, I do have people that care about me and all I have to do is reach out. So thank you, Audrey. This is a very special moment. I'm glad that this picture kind of um, was able to highlight that. And I hope it does for anybody that sees it, see it as an intimate friendship between a, a guy and, and a girl. So really love that picture. Uh, number 10, this is the top 10 now. So I call this one Air Mikey. Uh, I was, it's funny how life, life happens. We were both uh, at a hostel and they left before I did. I still had a shower and uh, get my things. And as I come out, who do I see on the street? I see Mikey and uh, Andy, Mikey from uh, England. Uh, and then I have uh, Andy from Munich, Germany, Deutschland. And uh, they were taking pictures with their cell phones. And I was like, hey, you guys want me to take your pictures? And that turned into a two hour photo shoot uh, and this is us making our way to the Nissan uh, Stadium. We saw this bench and Mikey had the idea of jumping and that I capture him in the air. And it came out so good. I was like, Mikey, this could be like on a Vans like brand type of uh, advertisement. And uh, it came out great. We all did the jump. They all came out great. But Mikey's was the first one where I was like, whoa, this, we have something here and this is one of those like when you're looking back and it's like wow even in the moment we were like whoa look at this we were all behind the camera it's just three guys shooting the breeze having fun just enjoying each other's company doing a nice little activity like taking pictures of ourselves it's such a great afternoon i'll never forget those guys i'll never forget this moment so you guys are watching this andy cheers uh no actually mikey cheers andy haben sie einen guten tag man Thank you so much. Tobacco Barn is what I call this one. While I was in Nashville, I met Jennifer through Airbnb as well. And uh, Jennifer took me to Cross Plains, Tennessee, which is a farming town. And I loved it so much. Uh, we stopped at, our first stop was at someone's house and he was just talking about the farming life. And I remember being in her truck and like the breeze hitting us, warm sun keeping us nice and warm and a little bit of the humidity, right? And all you hear is the rustling of grass and wheat and trees and, and birds, and it's, it's just so calming being there. But as I was in the truck, I was looking over to this barn, which is what you're seeing. And when we were leaving his house, I told Jen, hey Jen, can we um, go take a picture of that? And so she drove up to it, because it was about half a mile away, a quarter of a mile, something like that. And so we, we drove up to it. We actually went inside. I got some great pictures inside, but um, the shot I wanted was of this in the distance. You can't see her truck. Her truck is just off to the side. I didn't want it in there. Uh, so I kind of walked backwards and I took the shot that I had in my mind when I was sitting in her truck when we were still talking to her friend. And it came out exactly how I wanted it. In my head, it came, it, it, it's perfect, exactly what I wanted. So anytime I see this picture, I just think of that simpler farming life, you know, where you're just blue collar, just not really in the city life, but it just, it just kind of took, gave me a little bit of the spirit of Tennessee. That's what I'm trying to say. And this picture means a lot to me. And that's why it's number nine. All right. Next one is Regina's Steve. Logan Airport. I arrive at 9 PM after I've been traveling since 6:30 in the morning Vegas time. So I was traveling for nine hours. 
I'm tired. I'm looking for a place to eat. Regina's is open till 12 a.m. I was like, let's go. Get an Uber. I drive there. Puts me in the freaking heart of Boston. This is at the north end. And uh, I'm, I'm waiting to, to enter because I have a couple people ahead of me. I look through the, the, through the window and I see Steve at the bar. I was like, oh, that guy's interesting. Lo and behold, I sit in front of Steve at the bar. Me and Steve start talking. Before you know it, we're having this full-fledged conversation about life. And I made such a connection with Steve that I was like, Steve, let me take a picture with you before I go. So we take a picture. Um, and I wasn't the only one that took a picture with him. A lot of people want to take pictures with him because Steve is amazing. And, but I will always remember that as being my introduction to Boston. And I just, I loved it so much that I had to put this in my top uh, pictures of 2019 because this really kicked everything off. I st when I look at this picture, I still remember the cobblestones. I still remember the dark streets, the weird weaving and going of the North End. It was a great night. And I just remember also being in my taxi cab, going to Foxborough and being like, thank God, I'm gonna, I need a bed. Get me to bed. So I'll always remember this. Thank you, Steve. If you guys are ever in Boston, go to Regina's Pizzeria. Great pizza, great people, great environment. That restaurant was amazing. All right, this picture is with my friend Melissa. She posted an Instagram story that she wanted to do a photo shoot. I DM'd her like, hey, I'm a photographer. So we met up, we took pictures at this park and I hadn't seen, hung out with her. I haven't hung out with her in like maybe four or five years. And so this is basically uh, the rekindling of a great friendship. We're roommates now. This is such a fun day. This spiritually, this really, this really propped me up to where I'm at right now. And um, it was just so much fun to do this shoot. The other thing is that this tunnel, I've been looking for this tunnel for months, maybe years. And what's funny is when we were walking up to it, I was like, I think this is it. And I told her, I've been looking for this tunnel for so long. Uh, and it was just so funny that it was there. Uh, also, the way that uh, the day was going, it was starting to be sunset. It was still in the summer. So the way the sun was hitting the tunnel, we were getting some really good lighting uh, where the light was just bouncing off the ground and onto us. So that's why the lighting on this is perfect. And as you can see, we're just having fun, doing some funny poses. This is the one where she came out great. This is one where I don't come out all weird. So like, this is the picture that I really like. Uh, as you can see, she has more muscle than me, so embarrassing. But other than that, uh, this is the restart of a great friendship. I'll never forget this day. Unless I love you, girl. I love this picture. This next one is called Airplane Wing. Point blank, this was the end of my Nashville trip. I'm heading to Atlanta airport. And um, I remember being in, the, in my airplane seat and just looking out the horizon and just thinking. And I was like, oh, let me get my camera. So I took my camera out and I took this picture you got a little bit of blue hour happening here. Um, it's a beautiful horizon, nice dark shadows on the plane, uh, some good highlights at the very top. But the thing is that like, this was me reflecting on what I had just done in eight days in Nashville. I had really grown a lot. And heading back home, I knew I wasn't gonna be the same person. And I just wanted to capture this moment where I'm in the air, leaving Nashville. Accomplished, getting everything that I wanted out of the trip and just feeling so proud of myself. That's what this picture is. It's not that it looks cool. It's that it really puts me in that mindset of where I was, tired, ready to get home, just a completely new person with a new perspective. That's what this picture represents. And I just call this airplane wing. Uh, I might change that title later, but this is a great picture, picture number six. At number five, we are now at the top five pictures. Top five picture. Uh, I actually had this a lot higher, but the more I thought about them, it kind of got bumped down. Sorry, Maritza, if you're watching. But Maritza, I met Maritza through William. William texts me on a Thursday, right? He says, hey, can you do my sister's wedding tomorrow? <laughs> I go, yeah, sure. Very unsure about myself. I talked to Maritza the rest of the day. Talk about price, talk about where it is, what time, what she wants, all that sort of stuff. Am I good? I have to show her my pictures. And um, and uh, sure enough, Friday afternoon, when I'm getting my stuff ready, I'm in my bed and I'm thinking, should I do this? Should I just tell her that I can't? Because it's such a quick turnaround, right? 
one minute I go, oh, my first wedding is going to be at the end of the month. Now it's like my first wedding is tomorrow. Crap. So I go to the venue. I look at the venue. I, I scout it and I find a couple of good spots where we could take some pictures, right? Well, this is one of those impromptu pictures where you just, you make stuff up on the spot. So Maritza has the idea of what if I put my veil up and you take a picture and I go, sure, came out great. Look at it. The thing is that we got very lucky. Number one, I love the angle. The, the looking up at her angle was amazing. You have a lot of glitter, a lot of sequins, a lot of beads. It's all gold. It shines. It's very nice. The thing with this is that we got lucky that we had either a, uh, a pillar or a frame of, of the wall hitting her face. Because as, as you could tell, on the right side of her face, she's very overly exposed. She's washed out. The light hits her. So had she been exposed to the window, this picture would not have come out like this. I could have probably edited it down, but it wouldn't have looked as good. So with this picture, we got very lucky that she had something blocking the sun so you could see her facial expression. This is one of those very lucky pictures that we got that actually works. So now from now on, anytime I shoot a bride, and I did with that next wedding that I did of my friend Myra, I call it the Maritza veil shot because it was all her idea. So credit to you, Maritza. This next picture is it was like, what was it? 15 years in the making almost. I've been wanting to go to a Patriots game since I started watching football in 2004. I used to watch football as a kid, but I never sat down in new teams, knew how the game worked. I just would watch it. But when I actually learned the game and I fell in love with it, it was 2004. Ever since then, I've had this mystical feel about Gillette Stadium. And uh, I've always wanted to see Tom Brady play. I've always wanted to see Coach Belichick play, but I wanted to do it at home in Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And I finally got to do it. And it was so weird sitting up there. First of all, I'm very up high, but I like it. The higher you are in sporting games, the better because you get to see the whole field as opposed to being at the 50 yard line and getting this weird look of the 50 yard line. I don't know. I feel like the higher you are in sporting events, the better. Um, even in wrestling, I've been on floor seats. I, I have to look up, I can't see. I'd rather be, the higher up I am, the better. Um, so I didn't mind my seats. Uh, one thing I remember about this is Tom Brady coming out onto the field. The whole fucking energy, the whole atmosphere changed. It's like God walked out himself and everybody lost their minds and all he was doing was coming out to look at the field and I think he went back in or something. Oh no, he started throwing. But it was just, I'll never forget this day. And I'm so proud that I finally got to see Tom Brady play. All the speculation of him retiring or going to play for another team. I'm glad I got to do it now. I really appreciate it. And I feel the longer I waited, the more sweeter it was to be there. And I got teared up being there because I never thought that I actually would get there, but I did. I said, F it, I'll spend a fortune on, th on this ticket, airfare, and go see him and get to sign that off my bucket list. Getting, getting things done in two 2019, people. All right, next one, uh, Santa Monica. We're in our top three pictures. Santa Monica Beach, this was a trip I did in March. I wanted to just leave Vegas and just clear my head. Uh, I was in a very sad state at this moment. And I actually went to the beach, heard the ocean waves crashing. I did a little bit of med meditation, thought about life, and I regrouped, regained some energy. And I did that on my own. I didn't take a picture of that, but I wanted to represent what I did at that moment uh, through a photograph. So I said, let me, let me actually set up my camera and do what I've been doing for this last like hour or so. And I set it up to take a couple pictures. This is one of the pictures that came out. I got very lucky that that seagull flew in at that moment because it adds a little bit to the picture. But you look at this, it's just, it's a nice silhouette, beautiful skies, beautiful colors. Um, it just represents everything that I did at that beach, all that soul searching that I did. And it, that means a lot to me. That was the very first trip I did. And uh, it means so much to me because I really try to make an effort to forget about all the bad things happening in life and just look at life for the good and the positive and take that out. And that's what I came out of with that trip. And this picture will always symbolize that. And that's why it's number three, if not one or two, but I have a couple other shots here that I like, so let's get to those. Uh, the next picture, it's not the best picture, but it means a lot to me. When you take pictures, I talked about in the moment looking at it, it's like, whoa, we're taking some great pictures. 
But when you go back and you sit down and you look through all the pictures that you took, you come across one where you just, yes, how did I take this? That moment, that moment. This was one of those pictures that made me feel that, like I hit a touchdown or something. I was like, yeah, oh, I love this. How did I do this? Wow, I got so lucky. The reason why I say that, it's a beautiful picture in itself, Sean with his mom. Behind him is his sister and Myra's sister. Uh, and on top of them is the clock. So it shows you what time the wedding was, which is really cool. But the other thing is how lucky am I that these doors have windows. It's just nice glass to see through, right? I think it's like plexiglass. Behind them, you see Myra and her parents. So there's a lot going on in this picture. And I just love how lucky I was to capture this. It's not the best picture. It's not composed great. You have stuff over here that's making it look cluttered, uh, like the basket and the table. But still, I love the way the picture came out because of that. You have so many people in this picture at such a critical moment right before they're about to walk. And it's timed by the clock up there. So I thought this was an amazing picture. Uh, this is number two for me. I was very proud of the fact that I got lucky and I got this picture. So that's why it's number two. Lastly, um, I have a picture that I did not take. It was taken by a nice friend, Christy. Um, she is a photographer in Nashville and she took us to the Gulch. The Gulch is a beautiful, progressive, chic type of strip where you can get a lot of uh, healthy things to eat, some great restaurants, some nice boutiques to go shop in. Uh, there's murals everywhere. It's almost like an arts district type of thing where there's murals everywhere. That's where you have the wings as well, the Nashville wings, uh, where you see a lot of people taking pictures there. Beautiful section, a lot of construction going on because it's still continuing to grow. So I can't wait to go back in a year or two years, uh, see how much it's changed. But Christy took this picture of me jumping she told us to get on that little like watering pipe and then jump off. And one thing that this picture represents to me is the turning of a chapter. I'm going to just live life, jump in. And that's what this picture represents. It's me finally saying, I'm just gonna be happy. Making that jump, making that leap of faith where I'm just gonna be myself and I'm gonna see where life takes me. And that's what that picture represents. Um, it's so colorful and rich that it just talks about how life is colorful and rich if you allow it to be. Uh, so to me, that's number one. And how apropos that I did not take it, somebody else did. So it's just a nice, it's a nice representation of not being in control, not manip manipulating anything and just being yourself. And I love that picture. So that's number one. Um, if I had a cover for 2019, that would be the cover. So with that being said, guys, if you guys want to see some of the other pictures that didn't make it in there, follow my Instagram, at Jerry Revolution. Subscribe to this channel. I've got some great uh, videos coming up. One of them is actually a review on this laptop uh, where I do all my work now. Uh, another one is on a JBL speaker uh, that I love because I love music. So there's some other videos coming out. So subscribe so you don't miss those. Other than that, guys, comment below what your picture was with your Instagram. I'll check it out. Uh, and without further ado, I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'll catch you guys down the road. Avita Zayn. Bye.